Good afternoon. Joining us for this panel is Jane Liang from the Elm Grove Chinese Association, Liang Itake from the Papa Greater Sacramento Chapter, and I will have the distinct honor of joining them as well as a panelist. All right, good afternoon, and first of all, thank you so much to our three candidates for coming here today. And thank you so much to the audience for giving up a Sunday afternoon to come here and engage uh, with issues that are so critical uh, to California. Uh, just like the other panelists, uh, I'm going to introduce myself first and lay out some ground rules. My name is Patrick Lee. I'm from the Greater Sacramento Chapter for Papa. Good afternoon. I'm Leah Nitake, also in the Greater Sacramento, Sacramento Chapter of Papa. Good afternoon. My name is Jane Liang. I'm the president of the Elk Grove Chinese Association. Represent the tables over there. Wave your hands, Elk Grove. Thank you. Great, thank you. For our candidates, I'm uh, going to start with going over our process for this panel. Each candidate will have two minutes to provide opening statements. Uh, as always, we ask that our candidates focus on their policy platforms uh, and not on their opponents. Uh, after the opening statements, uh, this uh, moderator panel will ask you policy questions. Uh, each candidate will have one minute uh, to respond. Uh, when our question time concludes, each candidate will have an opportunity to provide a one minute uh, closing statement. Uh, with that, uh, let's get started, and perhaps we could start with um, Sir Martin Muser. <coughs> we have a crisis in California concerning the integrity of our election. According to MIT, California has the third worst elections in the United States of America. It doesn't matter if you're on the right or on the left. The integrity of our elections has great concerns. Let me give you an example. The main inhabitant of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue has a cell phone and he likes to use an app called Twitter. And he tweets about non-citizens casting illegal ballots. So that those on the right are concerned about the integrity of our elections of non-citizens voting. But over on the left, there's a lady named Jill Stein, and in November of 2016, she raised millions of dollars because they were concerned that the voting machines had been hacked. Now, I was one of the attorneys who was there in Michigan and Wisconsin recounting the ballots to make sure that no machine had been hacked and that the vote counted was the accurate vote. But it doesn't matter. There is integrity problems in our elections across the United States. As I said, California has the third worst elections in the United States of America. This last week, there was a report given to Congress where they said that there's a particular voting machine that's very susceptible to hacking. And in the state of California, four of our counties actually still use that machine, even though it's been known for 10 years to be susceptible to hacking. It is time we put somebody in the Secretary of State's office who is concerned about the integrity of our election, who's going to make the integrity of our elections foremost of his campaign. Over the last year, I have done more investigations of election law fraud, voter fraud, as a candidate for Secretary of State than the current Secretary of State has done, which is his official duties under the Constitution. So if you want integrity in your voting process, you need to vote for me, Mark Moisier, to be your next Secretary of State. Because with Moisier, you'll be more sure of fair and honest elections. Thank you, and thank you for being here this afternoon. I, I want to uh, congratulate Papa for the uh, great turnout, the well-organized forum. I am a retired Superior Court judge, as you heard, out of El Dorado County. I was born and raised in California. Uh, there was a time when California was known as the Golden State. But unfortunately, over the last decade, we have seen a steady erosion and a crisis within public safety. And our crime rate, violent crime rate in the state, has spiked. It continues to go up, and frankly, it's because of policies that have been implemented out of Sacramento. Policies that do not work and are putting at risk our kids, your kids, and our grandkids. We want California to be a place where you can live in safety, where you can do your best, where your education is second to none, 
But unfortunately, you can't do that if you're worried about uh, your safety in your home or on your street or in your neighborhood. And as your new Attorney General come January 2019, my focus is going to be on California and California needs, specifically in getting the human traffickers and the drug traffickers out of our state, the gangs, moving them out of here. We need a safe state. As your chief law enforcement officer, I will have the backs of our first responders, but I will also have your back because making California a safe place for you is what the Office of Attorney General is all about. Thank you. Thank you for our final opening statement, Mr. Greg Conlon. Yes, I'm Greg Conlon, the businessman at CPA, and I was here four years ago, and I, I appreciate it and applaud Apapa for putting this conference on. Well, no, okay. I know it's very expensive to do, and I think you did well in raising the money and putting on the performance. And I, I just want to spend a minute on my Asian connection. I spent 12 years on the self-help for the elderly in San Francisco, which is a social service agency that serves 20,000 seniors. And during my 12 years experience, we built a senior center of 75 units on top of the Broadway tunnel in, in uh, San Francisco. So I, I, I did everything on that board except learn how to speak Cantonese and, and Mandarin, which I should have done. But the issue for California, I mean, the treasurer's office is financial, it's not political. I mean, in half the states, the treasurer and the controller are appointed by the governor, not elected. And that, and that shows you the lack of political issues being on that office. But the number one issue is our credit rating. We all have credit ratings. We know what it is. California is the fifth largest economy in the world. It's the fourth worst credit rating in the United States. And if we don't do something about it, it's going to have serious consequences to your children, to yourself, and to your grandchildren. So I'm going to spend four years making sure that teachers have a pension when they retire because it's only two-thirds funded today. And the same thing for the public employees, it's only two-thirds funded. $300 billion of unfunded liability between the teachers and the public employees. It's a disgrace for the wealthiest state in the union, the fifth largest economy in the world, and we can't do better than that. I will spend four years solving that problem by putting in a new pension plan for the new employees, a 401k type plan, and it will gradually work our way out of that unfunded liability. The federal government did it in the 80s, Michigan did it in the, in the 90s. So I appreciate your support. My opponent, unfortunately, is not here, but if you go to my website, there's another opponent uh, issue that she did not show up, but it's on KQED. Michael Krasny for a half hour if you want to watch that or listen to it. Uh, and I, she's missed two other events. It's a disrespectful to you and to me that she will not come forward and discuss the issues so that the public can decide which has the best experience and the best ex best answers. So thank you, Greg Connell, for staying short. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for those opening statements. This first question is for all three candidates. This year, the Me Too movement brought to light a number of sexual abuse scandals that unfolded in Hollywood as well as the California State Capitol. Reported instances of dehumanizing sexual harassment behavior has forced lawmakers and high profile legislative staff out of office. Since then, dozens of legislative efforts have been discussed to address workplace sexual harassment. But many argue that these measures don't address workplace cultures that discourage victims from reporting pervasive harassment. As an elected official, what would you do to address sexual harassment in your office? How would you create a safe workplace environment for those working for you? And how would you keep your colleagues accountable? Judge Bailey, could you please start? Thank you. No matter what uh, your work environment is in this state, all of our citizens 
all of our employees, whether uh, a male, female, transgender, need to have safety. They need to have clear, distinct rules and regulations so that all understand what it violates our policy. As your next Attorney General, I won't tolerate it in the Department of Justice or in the Attorney General's office. We will create clear policies that provide for protection of victims, but also for due process for those that are accused. You've got to have both in your office. But currently, we have exempted government from many of the policies, including the legislature, from many of the policies that affect our other agencies. And we need to make sure that there's clear and distinct rules that uh, transcend all portions of government and society. Thank you. Mr. Conlon, please go next. Yes, I was president of the California Public Utility Commission where we had 800 employees. And to my knowledge, during my two years as president, we had no incidents that was reported. Now, I, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen, but I'm just saying that from my knowledge, it did not happen. I think discriminations uh, against gays and, and other minorities is, is another issue that had to be addressed. And I, I just want to relate a quick story of one of the people that came to my office and was complaining about being discriminated against because he was gay. And I said, hey, I'm willing to hire you as the chief of staff in my office. And he kept complaining. I said, hey, do, do you hear me? You know, and he said, well, I, I guess I do. So he, he was my chief of staff for two years. And I had another gay person working with me at the same time. So I, I've certainly demonstrated my lack of prejudice. And I think in the, in the sexual harassment, I think we just need to make sure we define what it is and what it isn't so that people understand when they're crossing that line. And that would be the first thing I do is have a training program that clearly define where the line is and when you cross it and how you cross it. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nelson. The Secretary of State is the Chief Election Officer of the state, so it means as the Secretary, or the candidate for Secretary of State, I'm focusing on those issues. But on the Me Too movement, because it's how I'm gonna run my office, as an attorney, I have represented victims of priest abuse. I have vi represented victims of sexual abuse. I have been on the board of directors of a company that one of the vice presidents committed sexual harassment, and I had to literally go in, clear his computer off, get him out of the office, and, and the, go through the whole uh, get him out of no longer on the board, no longer working for the company. You gotta act fast, you gotta act decisively, you cannot tolerate it. If there's actual evidence, if you got an accusation that can be proven, you got to respond, and it got to be swift so that everybody knows that that behavior will not be tolerated. Thank you. Um, my question is related to election security, so I will address uh, ask uh, two of them. Mr. Muser and the Judge Bailey. Congress is currently wrestling with election security. With several reports that foreign countries are actively attempting, attempting to either influence election outcomes on tampering with the electronic voting machine. And uh, Mr. Muser, you mentioned about updating the machines. Um, my question to you both is, other than updating the machine, uh, your separate role, what do you would do? And also, California is the home of a lot of the social media companies. So what do you do? One is work with the social media company and work with the correct information consumers come in the fake news. What would you do? So starting with uh, Mr. Musa. Thank you for the very good question. I like that. Um, I've talked to many 
people in Silicon Valley who have expertise on security. And what they tell me is that there's a real problem with the level of security that we're doing, the level of encryption. At the government level, we're using some of the most basic encryption levels rather than the highest level of encryption. And if we want to have, make sure that our voter databases are not hacked, if we want to make sure that our machines are not hacked, we need to step up our game and pay for that higher level of encryption so that people can feel secure about the integrity of their elections. We here in California are blessed with some of the best technology companies in the world. And it's time that we stop ignoring them, but actually start listening to them to make sure that we are doing everything that your banker is doing to keep your money secure. We need to be doing everything in Sacramento to make sure your vote is secure. Thank you. Thank you. As Ms. Our candidate for Secretary of State has said, Mr. Musin, the uh, election integrity affects every one of us. If there's a criminal act that has taken place, whether it's here in this state or it's international, the California Attorney General ought to have uh, a role in prosecuting that. We ought to be working with the Justice Department in Washington, not fighting with them, but working closely with them to ensure that California elections are the cleanest, the fairest, and the best system of elections anywhere in the world. California always had the best. We ought to be striving for it in our elections, and that is your new Attorney General. That's exactly what I intend to do. Our next question is for our candidate for treasurer. Uh, as you know, California legalized recreational use cannabis. Uh, federal restrictions, however, are preventing banks uh, from doing business with companies involved uh, with the cannabis industry. Uh, this issue is forcing the emerging cannabis industry to do business with uh, cash only, uh, creating significant safety concerns. Earlier this year, the legislature shelved uh, an effort to create a state-chartered cannabis bank, uh, putting an uncertain resolution uh, to this issue. So, Mr. Conlon, as a state treasurer and uh, chief banker of California, what do you think of California's legalization of cannabis? But most importantly, how would you address the banking issue? Well, I, I think as far as the policy, I'm, I'm, I'm against it. I, I was against it from the very beginning, and I'm still against it. But that doesn't mean I won't uh, follow the law as the legislature lays it out. And if they believe that a, a separate bank would be helpful, that'll be fine. But uh, otherwise, I think it can be monitored by the treasurer's office and the controller's office with their right of audit that they could make sure that the funds are being collected properly, they're being controlled properly, and that the state is receiving all its funds that it should. Because my understanding is that the black market is still rampant and to avoid the tax. So it's a law enforcement also. So I think it's, it's a threefold with the law enforcement also. So I would make sure that the, that the legislature gave clear guidance on what they want us to do with with the cash, but I, I see no reason why the, the treasurer's office couldn't perform the normal function that it would do to control that cash. Thank you. The next question is for Judge Bailey. Our country continues to experience, to see some of the deadliest and most horrific mass shootings. In response to these events, California has enacted some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation. For example, this past Friday, Governor Jerry Brown signed several gun control bills, including one measure that raises the minimum age for buying rifles from 18 to 21. Could you assess the state of gun control in California? Do you believe that these policies are too much, not enough, or strike a good balance between preserving the public safety and our Second Amendment right? Thank you, that's an excellent question. You know. When you, when you look at California's laws in comparison to the rest of the country, the one thing that is painfully evident is that we have, while having some of the strongest uh, and most comprehensive gun control laws, we have some of the highest rate of violent crime and gun use. Let me tell you what I believe the solution is. To spend less time chasing after law-abiding California citizens 
and a whole lot more time chasing after the some 10,000 individuals that are statutorily prohibited from possessing firearms in this state. That list is the sole responsibility of the current appointed incumbent Attorney General. As your new Attorney General, I'm going to make that the top priority of the office. Let's get those guns off the street. Those are the guns that are creating the gun violence. Thank you, Judge Bailey. It seems we've uh, run out of time for policy questions, so we're going to move into closing statements. And as a reminder, it will be one minute closing statements for each candidate. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Conley. I want to thank the audience and uh, Papa for putting on this event. It's very nice of you to do this. And I, I do apologize for my opponent for the disrespect she shows you for not showing up. So uh, I think we need to focus on the problem. The problem is we have the fourth worst credit rating in this nation, and no one is talking about it. We have a $300 billion liability for the unfunded pension liability. We have $85 billion in debt. We are not financially sound. And I will spend four years trying to get the pension problem solved so that we can be, improve our credit rating from fourth to last to at least in the midpoint, if we can possibly do that. And that's my sole uh, approach. And so if you elect me, Greg Connell for State Treasurer, I have experience with a major accounting firm for 30 years, and I think the difference between my opponent and I is she's a CPA and I'm a CPA, but I've got about 30 years experience and, and with large S&P 500 companies and hers is not the comfortable. So I appreciate your support. Greg Conlon for State Treasurer. And my website is gregconlon.com. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Bailey. Thank you, and thank you for being here this afternoon. Um, as your new Attorney General come January 2019, my focus is gonna be on California and California issues exclusively. I'm not going to react to every single tweet that comes out of the White House. I'm going to be focused on making your streets, your communities safe as your chief law enforcement officer. I will stand with my back with our first responders, our fire professionals, and our police. Uh, that's why I've been endorsed by the Los Angeles Police Protective League, the largest law enforcement union in the state of California, the uh, association of Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs, the Sacramento County De Deputy Sheriffs Association, and law enforcement professionals throughout the state of California. Um, for more information, go to my website at www.baileyforag.com. That's B-A-I-L-E-Y-F-O-R-A-G.com. Thank you. last but definitely not least, Mr. Mark Miser. The counting of your vote should not be a partisan issue. And while the Office for Secretary of State is a partisan office, it's time that we take partisanship out of the counting of your ballot. Is it critical in a day and age where there is concern on both sides of the aisle about the integrity of our elections? that we put into the office someone who actually understands election law, actually understands counting the ballots, and stop putting in someone who's just a career politician. The integrity of your ballot, the integrity of your vote, requires you to look at the candidates and vote for me, Mark Moiser, to be your next Secretary of State. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that your voice is heard. We live in a republic, our flag says California Republic. In a republic, we have the privilege and the duty, the responsibility to choose our elected officials who pass the laws that we must be governed by. My name is Mark Moisure. I'm running to be your next Secretary of State. And was Moisure your more sure of fair and honest elections?